My name is Kathleen. I am the president of the board of Nuzzles & Co. And um, how many of you guys remember Robert Fulgham, Everything I Needed to Learn I Learned in Kindergarten? Do you guys remember that? Okay. That is all you need to know about coalition building too. Um, so what I want to talk a little bit about is how to be a good coalition member and what that means for a rescue. So Nuzzles & Co, what we are, is a 501c3 rescue. We've been in um, Summit County, which is just east of here, Park, near Park City, uh, for the last 26 years. We started out just as a volunteer group of passionate people. There was no shelter in Summit County, and uh, that was not acceptable. So some very dedicated volunteers started saving animals, putting them in a foster program, and driving around to all the Petcos and Pet Smarts and doing adoptions. And then we actually, um, about 13 years ago, were able to secure a retail space in Tanger Outlet Mall, uh, which is really one of the busiest places in Park City and even Salt Lake City because it has all these really great outlet stores. So we actually had some space and we were able to begin doing adoptions out of there. And then in 2010, we opened a ranch about 15 minutes east of Park City up one of the canyons. It sits on 100 acres and it's a 16,000 square foot facility. We have a vet clinic on site. And what that enabled us to do was to really, that became our hub and we were able to reach out first to our county because we have a commitment to Summit County to make sure they're no kill. And once we were able to make sure Summit County was no kill, we were able to reach out to other shelters across the state and help them with their needs. And we bring the animals back to our ranch, our veterinarian and her staff on site, patch them up, and we have a little training, a little behavior sessions, and then when they're ready, they hop in our little nuzzle shuttle van and we drive them to the outlet mall and that's where we do our adoptions. So um, that's sort of our model. And um, in 2014, we learned that Best Friends was putting together this coalition. Of course, we were very excited about that, to have somebody who would sort of lead all of these individual shelters and movement and people um, in one direction. And so when we found out that we were going to be a coalition member and what this coalition was and we had this audacious goal to make Utah no kill by 2019, one of the first things that we did is to sit down with our board of directors, with our management staff, with our major stakeholders, donors, and um, volunteers, and people who've been involved in the organization, and really evaluate what is it that we can bring to the table that will have the biggest impact. You know, and when we look at the problem of overpopulation and euthanasia in our shelter, we know how to solve this problem, right? It's not like we need to come up with a cure for cancer. We know there's two sides to this equation. You work the spay neuter side, you work the adoption side, and eventually we solve this problem. So as a rescue organization, we wanted to see, looking at that equation, what do we bring to the table? Well, we're in Summit County. We have a conditional use permit um, at our ranch, and I won't get into all the legalities of that, but essentially that means we can do our own spays and neuters, but we can't invite the public up and do private spays and neuters. So that kind of limits us to working the spay-neuter side of the equation. We can pass out vouchers, and we do, um, if we find out there's, you know, a, a community cat colony living behind the gas station, we'll take them vouchers and, you know, encourage spay and neuter, but that was not where we were going to have the biggest impact to make Utah no-kill by 2019. And Best Friends is really leading the way with that with their clinics, um, as Arlen described, in the south of the valley and the north of the valley on the Wasatch Front, where, where most of the population in Utah is. But what we looked at was, hey, we've got this retail center in Tanger Outlet, and they have generously just $200 a month for 12 years to have about 2,200 square feet. What if we really focused on making an impact with increasing our adoptions? And that, you know, and, and I talked about that, and I won't get into a lot of that today, but I've talked about that before, which was 
well then let's make this a really great experience. Let's become the crate and barrel of animal rescue um, so that people come back, that people who might not go to a rescue or a shelter will certainly come to us and adopt because it's a warm and friendly and inviting experience and we focus on exceptional customer service. Our employees are matchmakers and when they leave, not only did they get a darling cat or a beautiful dog, they had this incredible experience and they're gonna tell their friends and family about it and we're gonna increase adoptions. And the great news is, Focusing on that has actually worked really well for us. In 2014, when we sat down and had this discussion, um, our adoptions were pretty flat and actually on a downward trajectory, and now they're skyrocketing. They're up 134% since 2014. <clears throat> So in just two years, really focusing on what our resources were and our strengths and being honest about what our weaknesses are and where we're not going to have an impact really allowed us to put our resources into where we could have an impact. And we have been very successful with that. So that's the first thing I think when you come to the table as a member of a coalition to really evaluate that and see what you can bring and what niche you can fill and then work really hard to fill that niche. Um, and then I thought about, you know, there's a lot of us out there. There's 53 or 56 of us now. <clears throat> That's a lot of rescues. And you know, we are a passionate group. I would also go so far as to say that we are an opinionated group of people about how things can be done. And so when you have a passionate, committed, opinionated group of people together all working toward one goal, it can be a little bit tough behind the scenes to make sure we are all on working toward that goal. So I want to talk about really the three characteristics of how to be a good coalition member. And this seems simplistic, perhaps, in the same way that all I really needed to learn, I learned in kindergarten. But I think it's worth thinking about, and I think it's worth thinking about as an individual animal rescuer, as part of a bigger organization, as part of a, co a coalition, and then as part of this movement. How do I become part of the solution? And you know, we all often hear, you know, be, Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. And I think that really applies right now to each one of us as individuals, the change we want to see in the world is we want to stop animal killing and suffering. And I think we have to start with ourselves and how we approach what we're doing, other people, different opinions, and really think about the change we want to see and start with the small steps, which is me and I. So the first thing is Focus on mission and core values. We have a North Star, and that North Star is to save them all. We can all agree that that's what we want to do. And I think that's where we have to focus. And sometimes even among our staff or in discussions, we have to remind ourselves, keep your eye on the North Star. That's what we're doing. We're saving them all and we're all going to do it in different ways but that's really where we focus and you know our values and Arlen talked about what those values are you know, we have a North Star to save them all and then our values are we rescue and adopt that's what we're about we're not about breeding animals and selling them so you know that's a value that we can all agree on spay and neuter animals in our care. Again, we know how to solve this problem. We've got to work both sides of the equation. We can't adopt out animals that are not spayed or neutered. We want to encourage neutering and educate um, about that as well. So there's another value that we can agree on. Microchipping and responsible ownership. Right? When you have a cat or you have a dog, it needs to have a collar, it needs to have tags, needs to be microchipped. That animal needs to have a home and you need to be a responsible pet. We can agree on that. And meeting each animal's needs. Again, providing for the basic medical care of the animals in our care so that we don't adopt out sick animals, so that we don't adopt out injured animals. We take care of their basic needs. So we have a North Star and then we have our values that we can agree on. And that's what we need to focus on. Every minute, 
every day, every meeting, focus on the mission to save lives, align on the core values, and then let the rest go. Because the rest of it doesn't matter. And I'm talking about a lot of the different ways that we're gonna solve this problem. I think about a mountain, and we're all trying to get to the top of the mountain. Well, there's a lot of ways up. There's the straight up the face, there's the switchbacks, there's the long way around, but we're all trying to get up the mountain. So we might disagree on things like home visits, for example. We don't do home visits. We encourage our matchmakers to have a conversation and in that conversation to glean information so that we're making a match between somebody who might be a really active outdoor person. We're gonna match them with an active dog. Other people might have a five page application process and that's okay. We can still partner with them. Um, Home visits. Some organizations are going to do home visits. They're going to do follow-up visits. Other organizations aren't going to do home visits. They think that might slow down the process and more animals are waiting to be saved and we need to move animals through quickly into homes and we have to take a little bit of risk. We're going to disagree about some of those things and that's okay, right? Another one, adoption fees. Some organizations might have free cats for the month of October, and other organizations might not agree that that's what they want to do or that's how they want to adopt out cats, so they might have a higher fee, and they don't reduce their fees. We could argue about these things all day long, and that's not going to get us any further up the mountain. What's going to get us further up the mountain is agreeing on the core values and keeping our eye on the North Star. So to the extent that you get in the weeds, and we all go there, right? There's so many ways to do this, and there are certainly our best practices, but we all can get in the weeds and get focused on the wrong thing, and as soon as that happens, you're not paying attention to the North Star. So as coalition members, I think you have to, you, it's not a I think, you really do. You have to respect that not everybody is going to take the same path up the mountain, but you all agree on what's at the top of the mountain, and that is where we save them all. <clears throat> the second thing is to collaborate and cooperate. And this is built on respect. And I think, you know, we have to respect that we're all out there doing the best we can, using the resources that we have, making the best decisions that we have to try and save lives. And one of the things as a 501c3 that I think is the big elephant in our room among rescue groups is we are all out pursuing donors and individual donors. If we don't, we're not going to keep on with our mission. We're not going to recognize our goal to save lives. We have to find individual donors. We have to find corporate donors. We're going after them as well. And we're going after volunteers because volunteers are what keep our labor costs down and really help us grow our organization. But there's 56 of us, and a lot of us are either right on the Wasatch front or right on the Wasatch back, and we are all pursuing these resources. I don't want to use the word competing, because the philosophy here has to be that when one of us rise, we all rise together. So we have to allow everyone to pursue what it is that they need to pursue in order to keep their organizations afloat, to keep their operations working, but we need to recognize we're all doing that. And, you know, I think there are ways, first, it comes with an acknowledgement, right? I think first we have to acknowledge that that's what we're doing. And then I think we work together. So, for example, Best Friends does a really good job of this. They have a adoption center in Sugar House right here in Salt Lake City, and it's a bustling place. They have so many volunteers come in that they actually have a wait list. Am I right? Okay. So they have a wait list of volunteers. They have a wealth of, of volunteer resources. 
We are in Park City. Our ranch is an hour's drive from Salt Lake City. And it can be a little bit treacherous in the winter to get up the canyon and, and through the snow. And so we're always trying to find more volunteers and to keep our volunteers and to get our volunteers up to our ranch and to our adoption center in the winter. And so what Best Friends did is said, look, we will send our extra volunteers out to the other rescue groups who need volunteers and we'll share the extra wealth that we have in terms of volunteer labor with you guys. So that's a wonderful way to collaborate and cooperate. You have more than you need and you're sharing with us and we need a lot of volunteers. Another way is to sort of recognize, you know, hey, uh, in, in our state, um, the Humane Society of Utah has teamed up with Subaru, and Subaru has a pet of the week and is very supportive of the Humane Society. The way I look at that is that's a wonderful partnership for the Humane Society and Subaru. I wouldn't go near that. I wouldn't try and take that or steal that or get an in or, well, Subaru must be animal friendly. Maybe they'll be friendly with us. That's a partnership that works really well for the Humane Society. And when the Humane Society can save more animals, we all rise together. But I will tell you that I'll sit down with their development director and say, that's really awesome that you got Subaru. I'm thinking of going after Chevrolet or Hyundai. And how did you do that? How did you get that partnership? And to have, have that person who's actually said, yeah, let's go to lunch, I'll tell you how we did it. So to recognize as well that I'm not gonna take an opportunity away from you, but I would really like your advice on how I can get that for my organization. And, you know, it also comes really with an attitude of believing in abundance and not scarcity. That there is enough out there for every one of us to achieve our mission and to achieve our goals. And that we're not competing for scarce resources, but actually we live in a world of abundance and gratitude. And that's the attitude that we take with donors, volunteers, and sharing our resources. And then the third one, really to be a good coalition member, and that is to engage in positive behavior. And it sounds simple, and it's great to say on this stage, but when you all get on a plane and you all go home and you're all working again, it's really hard to do, and it's hard to do on a daily basis because we do see a lot of things that are sad, that are frustrating, that are challenging. But we really do need to engage in positive behavior, not only with our fellow rescues, but with our city and county shelters. You know, they have been villainized by people in the rescue community for so long, um, and in movies and cartoons. I mean, I grew up thinking the dog catcher was the scariest possible person in the entire community. And so, you know, we can, in rescue, get very frustrated and very judgmental and start pointing fingers and engage in really negative behavior, not, toward, not just toward each other, but to the animal control officers and the county and city shelters that we're working with. And that's really, really detrimental to achieving our North Star, and that is to save them all. So, you know, we support and celebrate each other's successes. And when resources are tight, and you didn't get the grant you thought you were gonna get, and the other organization did, it's really hard to be okay with that. But I encourage you to be more than okay with that and take the step further and celebrate that. And again, the philosophy is we are all going to rise together. So maybe you didn't get the grant for your van, but you need to celebrate everybody's successes. And you need to come from that place of celebrating everybody's successes. Conversely, you also need to be a safety net for each other. This is hard. This is a lot of hand-to-mouth work. And there are times 
where you take a leap of faith and rescued an entire shelter full of cats that were going to be euthanized only to find out you don't have enough cat food to feed them. And that's when we need to be rescue nets for each other because maybe somebody has cat food. Maybe somebody can also get on their Facebook page and say, hey, can you guys drop off cat food? Next time you're at the grocery store, pick up some cat food. One of our rescue partners did a big rescue and is out of cat food. That goes so far. And I think that not only does that actually solve the problem, because now we have cat food and we can feed the cats, but we're also telling the larger community out there, we're all going to solve this problem together. And we invite you to solve it with us. And we're leading the way in showing you what cooperation and collaboration looks like. And, you know, this is another community that is great. That's part of what is so great about this coalition, NKUT. In Park City, we have one day of online giving called Live PC, Give PC. And Park City has about 89 nonprofits in just that little small geographic area. And it is one day from midnight to midnight, and it is a day of online giving, and it's really competitive, and people are standing out on the corners with signs. Um, they're in the grocery stores. I mean, we're all competing for dollars. And, you know, we participate in that vigorously. It is part of our annual revenue. We count on that money. And, you know, that all takes place in Park City. You have to be a Park City nonprofit to do it. And every single year, we reach out to our other rescue partners here on the Wasatch Front, the Humane Society of Utah, best friends, and we ask them for a shout out. And it is the greatest thing in the whole world to see on their Facebook page best friends shouting out, you know, give to Nuzzles & Co. for Live PC, Give PC, or the Humane Society making a post about it and then getting it shared. It is, it buoys our, our, our um, spirits, it keeps us going, and it helps us win. So, you know, and then the animals, the animals win. So again, it's that whole philosophy of celebrating each other's successes and that we all rise together. And be humble and gracious. These are, say thank you. Apologize. You know, if you've stepped on someone's toes, say sorry. Um, and, and, and work together in that way. And then, you know, it's up here, so I was going to ask, what do you think is one of the ways that you can tear each other da down the fastest? I mean, what is the most destructive, fastest way to tear each other apart? And that is gossiping. Gossiping about people within your own organization, other rescues, and I want to put in there city and county shelters. They need to be taken off the hit list by us. And we don't gossip about them. We don't talk about them in a bad way. We need to build them up. And we need to be really, really careful how we do that. And we need to be very mindful of what we say. And I'll give you a little example of something that happened last year. We had, uh, we help a rural shelter about 80 miles west of here. Maybe not that far, 60 miles west of here. And in that shelter was a pregnant pit bull. And she wasn't very old. She was a young pit bull. And she was just sort of sitting in her kennel, looking really just miserable. She was full of puppies and all forlorn. And the sun was kind of coming in. And we snapped a picture of her right when we were going to rescue her. And then we put that picture on social media to talk about what we've done. And we've rescued this dog and she's pregnant but we're she's safe now and we've got her in a foster home and she's going to be okay that was the intent of the post the way the post was written was daisy was all alone in the shelter but we rescued her and now she's safe in our shell in our ranch and we heard from the person who runs that shelter and all she said was daisy was never alone and it broke my heart because that woman works so hard in this little shelter to take care of these animals, and she was working so hard with this one pregnant pit bull. And when she saw that we had rescued it and said that she had been alone in a shelter, we degraded her. 
and we, di we disrespected her work. And that was never the intent, and it was just the slightest slip. And we used that word just to paint a slightly sympathetic picture, and we really hurt her feelings. So, you know, we have to be so mindful and so careful of how much people put into this and what they do and then how we portray it and what we do to each other privately and publicly. So, I love this quote, and it's coming together is a beginning, for sure. Staying together is progress and working together is success. And as a coalition member, this is our mantra. And we have to work together, and we have to keep our eye on the North Star. Thank you.